Hey guys, JC here. Welcome back to the channel and today's video from the Card Cave in Spokane, Washington. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a preview of a small SGC submission that I am sending off uh, after I finish this video. But I also wanted to touch uh, on the uh, entire grading history of the uh, price increase with PSA and then the new company HGA. Just give you my thoughts uh, as to where I think uh, things will be in the next 12 months. Um, as most of you know, PSA announced a pretty substantial price increase on all of their graded cards across the board. Um, some, some prices have doubled from $50 to $100. dollars you know, It's amazing. Their regular service just basically became... Uh, unattainable for people that just want to send in mid-graded cards that are worth 50 to 100 bucks. It just does not appeal to any of those uh, collectors and sellers like myself. I, um, I specialize in most of the lower end 50 to $100, maybe $200 graded cards once they're graded. Um, PSA has completely priced me out of doing any grading with them. I am not submitting to PSA except if I ever hit a huge card that could be worth $500 to $1,000. That's the only time that I think I'll ever submit a card to them. Plus, their turnaround times are insane. Uh, right now, it looks like they're just their value submissions, which are $20 a card. You're going to get them back. If you submit them today, you're probably going to get them back at Christmas. So I don't feel like waiting nine months to get a card back that uh, I paid $20 for. So PSA, you have completely shut me out of submitting any cards to you in the near future. So um, that's that's a thought of a lot of people. But um, the other company that's been getting a lot of traction, um, a lot of discussion on Twitter and Facebook is Hybrid Grading, HGA. I have tried to submit. I have a few cards here that I want to submit to HGA. It's a Juan Soto rookie card. I've got a Josh Allen Illusions rookie card with Jim Kelly on it, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, this is a um, Seth Curry Dominance Prism Silver Refractor. And then the last one was a Luis Robert uh, Panini Crusade Silver Prism. Um, for weeks, I have been trying to submit these cards because I like their slabs. I like the way that they can color match the, the uniform or the card itself. Like this one is going to look really cool with the Bills colors on it. Um, and they only have two submission times. Thursdays at 5 o'clock Eastern and Fridays at 9 o'clock Eastern. Been trying to get in. It's like a lottery system. I can never get in. So HGA needs to figure something out to allow people to submit cards. Their turnaround times are really good. Their pricing is okay. Uh, it's a little more expensive than SGC. It's less than PSA. Um, but, you know, the jury is still out on them. They use a, a hybrid approach to grading. They do, um, they do use scanning, high resolution scanning to take a look at the cards to come up with a computerized grade. And then uh, human graders double check that. Um, but the, the slabs themselves look very, very high quality and the color matching of the slabs or the color coordinating with the colored parallel is really cool. So I'm going to continue to try and use them. But as of right now, I'm frustrated because you can't get in to submit cards. So it's just basically just week after week. I'm only available to do it on Thursdays because I work on the weekends. And Thursday at 5, I'm going to try it again today. I, w I was like number 2,000 in line. And they only allowed, I think, 400 people were able to submit last week. So right now, it's almost impossible to submit to them. So, um, But it is, a, it is a company to look out for. Um, I'm going to continue to try and submit these few cards just to test them out and see what they look like. But that leads me to um, uh, this, this video with regards to SGC. SGC has really knocked down their turnaround times. I've been hearing stories of people submitting, submitting regular submissions that are getting them back in two to three weeks. Now, back in the holidays, it was around two months, three months. A bulk submission that we sent with uh, bobbles and ball cards took about three months. 
but they're now within a month turnaround time, which is amazing. They've really worked on uh, turning, uh, getting the turnaround times to a much more manageable level. And I think part of it is because they did put a uh, kibosh on the bulk submissions and they were very hard on hiring people to bring, bring that turnaround time down. So that being said, I have eight cards that I have looked over, scanned, thought that have a really good chance at a really decent grade considering the card that is being submitted. So I'm going to go over those in a second. But one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about is if any of you are looking at submitting cards, I've heard a lot of horror stories of people putting cards in the mail without actually scanning them, looking at them, cleaning them. And by cleaning, I mean wiping cards down. Um, there was a few cards that I wanted to submit. And uh, like this is a Vlad Guerrero 2021 um, uh, special edition uh, tops the uh, the uh, logo one, the one where the, it's the archive logo out of 99. But as you can tell by the naked eye, the centering on this is way off. There's like a huge gap between top and bottom. This card would probably get an eight. It's that badly centered. So you guys have got to look at that. Those are some things. Just a couple pieces of advice if you are going to do a submission on your own. And I recommend you do it. SGC is at $15 a card, so it's actually really affordable to do it. But this one obviously is a no-go. Uh, I would not submit this card for grading. Then I was looking at this one. This is a Luis Robert Topps UK edition. Looks really, really clean. Um, I use a jeweler's loop. Um, this I bought off of uh, Amazon. I will actually leave a link below where you can actually buy one similar to this. Um, it's like 10x on the um, has a has a, a light to it. You can actually look at the corners, and by first glance, this card looks really clean. It actually. I, the only the only time I'm ever submitting a 2020 or 2021 card is if I think it has a chance at a 10, maybe a 9.5, but a 10 is what I'm trying to attain. But the top right corner has some whiting. You can I don't know if you can see it there. There's a little bit of whiting in the top right corner. That card is a 9.5 all day, every day. There's no way this card is getting a 10. But those are things that you can see with this jeweler's loop. So that one was a no-go. Then I bought this card off of eBay looked really clean. I looked at the, the the photos and then I then I turned over the back and I did some searching with my loop and I found at the bottom there's a ding. I don't know if you can see it right there. There's a ding on the back. I don't know what happened, but this card is probably an 8. Uh just because of that surface issue, but it's a beautiful card. The front looks great. It's going to, I'm going to sell it raw. Obviously I will announce that it's not going to gem because of the back uh, edge. And then this last one is a Fernando Tatis uh, Topps Gallery rookie card that I was looking at submitting. The centering looks really good. And one of the things, one of the things that you guys should do is you do have, if you do have a, a horizontal card, like this one instead of like this, is turn it every way you can to see how the centering is to the eye, top to bottom, and then turn it over and do the same thing. Uh, that way you can see if it really is to the eye centered. This card looks centered. It looks like it's in decent shape. However, uh, with the jeweler's loop, I did find a blemish on the back, and I can't remember. It was in the bottom corner where this would not gem. This is not a 10. So this is something that, you know, you have to look at that. I highly recommend you guys get one of these. You can use, uh, I think it's like 20 bucks. It's well worth it to do it, but uh, definitely utilize that when you actually go through the cards. All right, so I do have an eight card order that I'm going to review with you guys. Hopefully we'll see what the turnaround time is. Today is March 4th. So I'm going to send them off. They're probably going to get them next Wednesday at the latest. So we'll we'll put the counter, uh, the, 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 uh, timer on them and see how long it takes them to, to return them. So first card is obviously one of the iconic football rookie cards that um, everybody everybody knows. Uh, it's the 89 score rookie of Barry Sanders, one of the best running backs of all time. This card looks really, really clean. The centering looks really good considering it's a 1989. Now I took that into consideration. I am not looking to get a 10 on this card. I am happy with an 8.5 this could possibly get a nine. 
Um, there's no real blemishes. There's no uh, creases. I don't see any issues with the corners. Um, there's just a couple of small, like there's a small whiting on the corner in the bottom left. Little small little things that'll bring this down to possibly a nine, um, but I'm happy with a nine or an 8.5. So um, that's the first one is the Barry Sanders rookie card. The next card is uh, staying with football. Is This is the uh, Donruss rated rookie Justin Herbert rookie card. This is his base card. Um, I bought this off of Twitter, off of a, a seller on Twitter. It was an actual Justin Herbert lot of, I think it was five cards. There was a mosaic in there. There was a couple absolutes. And then there was this one. I bought the lot for this card because it looked extremely clean. Centering looks dead nuts on it, in my opinion. Um, the back looks really clean as well. Um, this, I expect a 10. I, I do not see anything that would draw it back from a 10 and knock it down any lower than that. Um, if it gets a 9.5, I'm happy, but I really expect this card to gem. So hopefully uh, we'll see a 10 out of the Justin Herbert. All right, the next card, Into Baseball. This is a card that I was on the search for for months, uh, a, a good, clean version of this card. This is the 2012 Gypsy Queen um, top, uh, Mike Trout card. It's his first Gypsy Queen card. Um, it's just a beautiful image. The card's really nice. I was really impressed with um, the way that the card looks, so I continue to look for one on eBay. I found this one a few months ago, and I've been waiting for the right time to submit it. I don't think it's going to gem. It's got a little bit of a corner issue um, in the bottom left. Um, I'm happy with a nine. So we'll see if this can get a nine. This is actually one card that's probably going to stay in my personal collection. Um, can't afford his rookie card, but I'm a big believer in second year cards of iconic players. And he is obviously one of the greatest players of all time. So I'm happy to put a 2012, uh, card in my collection of him. So, uh, the 2012 tops Mike Trout, I'm hoping to get a nine on this. So we'll see if we get a nine. All right, now to some more modern baseball. I've got a Topps Chrome update, Major League debut of Fernando Tatis. Now this card is so hot. I actually ha had a PSA 10 that I bought in November for $100. And I saw that the card prices were absolutely going insane on his cards. Um, I sold it two weeks ago, I think I sold it for $250, buy it now. No even not no even best offer. The guy just paid 250 bucks for it. I was very happy to make more than double my money in less than four months on this card. So I have another clean version of this card that I think will get a 10 that I'm sending to SGC. Um, the SGC values on the card are not the same as PSA, but I, one, of the, one of the things that I think will happen is I think you'll see SGC values go up um, and the, the gap will narrow between a PSA 10 and an SGC 10 over the next, over the next year. So I'm perfectly fine with submitting this one to SGC. Uh, if it gets a 10, it's probably worth $200 now. Um, it can continue to go up. He hit a grand slam in a game yesterday. So just one of those things I'm just really excited to see what this card gets. I think it's going to get a 10. So I have a few other copies of this, and I have a couple of the base uh, update that I'm not going to send in yet. But this one is really clean, so hopefully we'll get a 10 on that. All right, and then I've got a couple of Luis Robert uh, Chrome cards. I've already submitted a couple Chrome cards to SGC. I got uh, one of them back as a 9.5. I got this one back as a 10, which is his regular card. Um, I'm really high on Luis Robert. This is his refractor. Um, this is his Topps Chrome refractor. It does carry a premium. An S a PSA 10 is probably $300 or more on this card. If I can get a 10, and I, I believe this card has a chance at a 10, this card's probably $200 to $250 in an SGC 10 right now. Um, I do not intend on selling it immediately. I intend on waiting for um, the, the season to start because I believe this guy is going to have an absolute incredible season. And I want to take advantage of that when he starts uh, hitting the ball and hitting home runs and people are all on, on the Luis Robert bandwagon. So uh, I expect a 10 on this one. The next one I do not expect a 10 on. This is the sepia refractor. Um, 
the reason that I don't expect the 10, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is a bubble, a print bubble. I don't know if you can see right there. I don't know if there you go. Maybe you can see it right there. There's a little printing bubble on the surface, which would knock this card down to probably a nine. Um, I know it's such a small little blemish, but it's on the front of the card. It's a chromium card. Little blemishes like that can really destroy the grade, even though the rest of the card looks pristine. Um, this is probably going to get a nine, possibly a nine five, but I don't see it getting. I don't see it getting over a nine, but. Because it's a sepia, it has a very low print run. It's a higher in demand card. They're more rare. I'm willing to get this slabbed and put it in an SGC graded slab. So uh, let's see if we can get a nine on this. A nine five, I'd be ecstatic. But it will not get a ten uh, because of that one little um, printing um, blemish there on the on the on the top of the card. So that's the two Luis Roberts. Then I've got. What I really think is my first chance at a gold label 10. This is a Topps UK edition of the Beau Bichette rookie card. The card just it, it looks amazing. It looks as clean as any card I have ever submitted. The centering is, I think, dead nut centered. Um, I just don't see anything wrong with this card. I, it, obviously, I want it to get a 10, but I really think this card has a chance at a, at a gold label 10, and it will be my first gold label. I thought I had a chance at a Jack Hughes gold label 10, but came back a 10. Um, this one, I really think, has a really good chance. So we'll see what happens with the Beau Bichette um, 2020 Tops UK edition. Uh, it would get a premium, obviously, because it's it would be a gold label, but because it's a UK edition, it also has a little bit of a premium as well. And then the last card... Is a card that I um, originally wanted to submit to PSA, but the turnaround times being a year, it just doesn't make sense to me to wait a year for this card. This is the 2000 Aurora Tom Brady rookie card, the Pacific Aurora Tom Brady rookie card. Um, I've already got, I got one of his rookie cards back, and it was a nine. It was this card. It was the press proof, which I was happy with the nine. Um, so I'm happy with that grade. But this one, I believe, will get a 9 at least, if not a 9.5. It has really clean corners. The centering looks really good. It might be a little off top, uh, bottom to top. But other than that, the card looks really nice. Um, so I'm going to submit that one as well, and we'll see if we can get a 9.5. Probably a 9, which I'd be happy with. It's a 21-year-old card. Um, it's of the greatest football player that has ever played. So his cards are only, to go, only going to go up. Um, and then once he retires and makes it to the Hall of Fame, um, the sky's the limit on any of his rookie cards. So to have both of these rookie cards, um, I wish I had a Bowman. Uh, my nephew does. I bought my nephew a Bowman back when he was a little boy. This was back in the early 2000s. It's now worth uh, you know, $2,500, $3,000 in an eight. So he's happy about that, but I'm happy with these two. So, but that's it. I, that's it, guys. Do you agree with my assessment on the grades on these? I want to see how long it takes. Like I said, today's March 4th when I recorded this video. So hopefully we'll get them back sometime before the end of April, uh, if not early part of May. But that's, uh, that's you know, wishful thinking. I hope SGC continues to, to um, have the turnaround times decrease. Uh, so they, they get them back in the hands of the um, the collector much quicker. But um, guys, just a, a friendly reminder, really appreciate you watching. Remember to uh, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, hit that notification uh, button. We are getting close to 400 subscribers. My next big goal is 500. So we're on the push to get to 500. And then from there, we'll go and, and try and get to 1,000. But uh, let's do baby steps first. 400 would be great. Thanks for all your support. Appreciate you spending about 20 minutes. 20 minutes with me today from, from Spokane and the Card Cave, and we will see you next time. So have a good one, guys. Take care.